Welcome back to Fashion Hero. So, uh, some news from the motorsport world uh, coming out over the past week. So, of course, uh, starting with the big one that came out uh, yesterday morning in Europe, I believe, and that was that the uh, Madrid Grand Prix, uh, basically the Madrid uh, street circuit, was announced. So, this uh, street circuit in uh, basically around near the suburbs of Madrid uh, will be replacing the uh, basically the circuit in uh, Barcelona, Circuit uh, Catalonia from 2026 uh, and they've been given a 10-year contract so quite a hefty long contract it is and it's quite a circuit too um i'll leave a picture of the circuit layout uh, as the thumbnail of this video just in case anyone hasn't seen it yet but it's quite something uh very few straights lots of corners lots of slow slowish uh, roundabout corners so uh we'll see how it goes i'm sure someone will make a mock-up in some kind of sim like r factor i racing something like that uh, and uh, we'll see how it goes, but you know, I would say not not a great choice uh, by FOM uh, I honestly really like the circuit the Catalonia uh, playing it in the game uh, And I do think that we've only really had one. Yeah, we've had one Grand Prix on the new layout uh, with uh, without the chicane so of course uh, before that it was always kind of seen as one of those circuits that it had potential but uh, never really produced great racing because of that uh, you know notorious chicane at the final corner but, uh, you know, we'll see how this goes. Uh, moving on to Red Bull. And, of course, uh, we have one more team on the grid that does not really officially have a name for this year. And that is what was last year's Alpha Towery. Now, uh, Red Bull have basically registered the domain Visa Cash App RB, which is, we can presume is Racing Bull. So it would be Visa Cash App Racing Bull's team. Quite a mouthful, uh, not a great name, I, I have to say. Um, and of course, we knew that it was going to be Racing Bulls with something there. Of course, having that double sponsorship there definitely helps it roll off the tongue. Don't have a logo, don't have an, any kind of logo. Yet. Of course, we assume that will come in due course. Uh, moving on to McLaren. Now, there was an interesting article from Motorsport uh, interviewing uh, McLaren F1 CEO Zach Brown. Uh, and he really wants to kind of crack down on closing this uh, A and B team loophole. And basically, uh, because, you know, what is known as Alpha Towery, what was known as Alpha Towery, uh, will be using a lot more Red Bull, Red Bull parts from this year, uh, there is a pretty good possibility that they will be much closer in performance wise to the A team, basically Red Bull. Uh, and that would move them up pr pretty much, uh, much higher up the grid. I don't think they'll be competing with McLaren. I would be very surprised if they were able to make that much of a jump. But I think in a best case scenario, I could see them fighting with Alpine, for example. And, you know, for Zach Brown, but, you know, for Zach Brown, uh, he argues that F1 is in a very di di different place uh, from it was basically, you know, 15 years ago in the mid uh, 2000s. And he basically argues that, uh, you know, the fin we, we have a cost cap now, uh, the teams are much closer, we're, more, we're some closer to a franchise model similar that you ha to what you have in North American sports, NHL, NFL, uh, so on. And so he, he argues that there isn't really a place in modern F1 for a B team. But, um, you know, I understand where he's coming from, but I think at the same time it's important that we have these 10 teams on the grid. Uh, and I think it's undemi undeniable the effect that Red Bull having that having a sister team, meaning that they can basically bring in all these young drivers, the benefit that that has had to F1, uh, given that almost half the grid has come through that team. Uh, also, McLaren, uh, la sticking with McLaren, they have launched their livery for 2024, uh, very, very similar. Uh, basically, it's the same kind of overall color scheme last year as last year. The papaya, the black, uh, the chrome, the Google, stuff everywhere but they've eliminated the blue. And I do think it looks a lot, a lot, quite a bit cleaner without the blue, given that you have all the extra color there with the Chrome logos and stuff, not the color, the Chrome, the browser. Uh, so do think it looks a bit better. Uh, kind of reminds me of the 2017 McLaren in, in a way, uh, but like, nice, uh, nice reveal. Uh, moving on to their engine supplier, Mercedes. Uh, James Allison has signed a long-term contract to remain the technical director at Mercedes. So of course, uh, last year, early on in the season, he replaced Mike Elliott as technical director after uh, going to work on some boats for a couple of years. Uh, I'm sure you enjoy those boats, but he decided to stick around long-term with Mercedes, uh, really enjoying the challenge uh, that these regulations provide. I do think James, Allen, James Allison is a pretty 
a highly regarded technical director. Maybe not Adrian Newey level, but still a very, very, uh, you know, well known uh, and generally I think highly respected guy. Um, I do think you know sticking around long term is probably pretty good, a pretty good deal uh, for Mercedes and hopefully uh, the work that he's done over the past year has helped uh, Mercedes bridge that gap to Red Bull. Uh, moving on to Formula E news and this is coming out of Brazil coming from uh, basically a translation of an article from Grand Premio Brazil uh, and talking about things uh, calendar changes for next year for season 11 uh, despite the fact that we haven't even gone past uh, the second race of the season. So, apparently possibility of a loss, an LAE pre, Los Angeles E pre, uh, debuting uh, this winter, d December 2024, uh, some kind of stadium uh, circuit, uh, similar to what we had in Seoul, going around Dodger Stadium, which is the stadium for the Major League Base, one of the Major League Baseball teams in Los Angeles. Uh, so, haven't really heard a whole lot about other than that. Uh, this race would probably replace Portland as the e pre for the United States, but you know, the America is such a big country, uh, they could easily host two races. Uh, the other thing that I think is probably more important, and I think does have a bit more uh, precedent, like I would say is a bit more worrisome, is that the Sao e Paulo e pre uh, may have to be moved, maybe moved to December uh, because of a conflict with Carnival. So, of course, uh, they use the Samba Drome in Sao Paulo as part of the circuit. Of course, Carnival is basically the biggest event, biggest event, biggest party of the year in Brazil. And I was reading in this article that basically they have to use uh, the, the Carnival, the Samba Drome can't be used for two months prior to Carnival and then a whole month after Carnival uh, because of I was seeing practice and cleanup. Uh, so basically, it means that because of where Carnival is scheduled to be in 2025, uh, Sao Paulo wouldn't be able to host an EPRI until April. At the early, at the latest, or I guess yeah, at the earliest, uh, which would basically you'd be running into the European portion of the calendar. So, uh, possibility of a December, uh, December twenty twenty four date, and of course that would bring the Formula E kind of calendar back to where it was kind of in Gen one and the first season of Gen two, back when they actually used both years of the calendar like their seasons are. Um, so you know, of course, watch the space and we'll see how it evolves over the coming months. Uh, also, sticking with Formula E, the PIF, which is basically the Saudi uh, Saudi Arabian Wealth Fund, uh, has announced that they're investing heavily into Formula E, Extreme E, which is the basically the off-road SUV rally rally car uh, or rally cross kind of style series, and E1, which is this brand new uh, powerboat electric powerboat series, and that they're announced that they're basically investing in the you know the green technology electric uh, technology. So. Um, you know, obviously a lot of comment about that and about, you know, certain uh, accusations of sports washing about that. But, uh, you know, I think it's good that money is being invested into that uh, technology and into those series. Uh, now, finishing off with some Formula 2 news, uh, some drivers, of course, don't have a magnet yet. That's going to be made soon. Uh, two drivers who have been announced uh, to be driving for uh, in Formula 2. Uh, this coming season, starting with Victor Martins, uh, he's been confirmed for ART, uh, which is of course the same team that he drove for this past uh, last year. Uh, ART, one of the stronger teams, and Martins, I think, will be looking to uh, compete for that championship. Uh, I, I believe he finished fifth, fifth in his rookie season. I know he's a bit older for a rookie, but still uh, a very, very strong season, perhaps a championship, and he could be looking at a seat with Alpine in Formula 1. Uh, the other driver, uh, I don't think a guy who will be competing for the championship, is Rafael Villagomez uh, from Mexico. Uh, he moves up from Formula 3, he will be driving for VAR, the Dutch team. Uh, not a particularly good record in Formula 3, I have to say. Uh, no podiums, and he has 4 points over 3 seasons with a best uh, championship finishing position of, I believe, 25th. So, uh, you know, definitely a guy who I don't think will be fighting at the sharp end of the grid. Uh, I think best case scenario, he does it, he keeps it over the wall, keeps it clean, and nobody notices him. So, uh, that's all for, you know, news from the motorsport world. Of course, the big one is the uh, Madrid street circuit. Of course, I think there's some other interesting stories in there as well. So, uh, thanks so much for watching, and goodbye.